What's going on, America? Kevin back again. Just can't get enough today. Well, I got to make up for lost time. I've been sick. Still eating a cough drop right now. <coughs> oh, man. Sometimes you got you to gotta cough it up. Um, so anyway, doing a little more thinking. And I ain't talking about stinking thinking. I've been thinking more about this black former NFL player who basically tried to frame Trump supporters. This is what makes me so mad when it comes down to these fake hate crimes. <clears throat> when you fake a hate crime, you're not even thinking about the fallout and the potential consequences of your action. It's probably selfishly motivated. In his case, he figured it would fatten up his story if he says that, well, it was racially motivated and Trump supporters did it. He wanted to create fluff, make it look better and bigger than it is. It's kind of like back in college, you know, you write a paper and instead of sticking with the meat and potatoes, you throw in an extra, a lot of extra words that, you know, have nothing really to do with it, but it's, it's fluff. Yeah, you know, you're like, uh, you know, and the wily and elusive uh, dusky stunk can be found in the desert. Speaking of desert, uh, many people in the desert say that the air is very breathable and that that even though it's hot, it's a dry heat. Now, that has nothing to do with the dusky skunk, but you put extra stuff in there to fatten up your paper. So now when people put these fake hate crimes out there and create all this fluff around it, not just the, the fact that the crime itself is fake, but then you start sprinkling in extra stuff swastikas yeah what good hate crime doesn't have a swastika in it you know what i'm saying yeah oh we gotta throw in maga yeah that's the cherry on top set it right up there nice and pretty maga Bing! and put that cherry right on top so this guy goes on and he creates this fake crime fake hoax uh hate crime now think about the potential fallout remember what you're actually doing you are framing a group of people. That's what it is. There needs to be more punishment for those that put together these fake hate crimes. Because on a mass scale, a lot of people fall under the umbrella that you just created or the media has created. That a large group of people with these beliefs are responsible for this type of behavior in our society. Therefore, as soon as you see the hoax, the fake hate crime, you now, in your mind, if you're an idiot, you're saying, well, uh, all these Trump supporters. Now, what you just did is you didn't frame some person, some innocent Joe. You didn't frame the president. You now have framed all of us. You attempted to say that all Trump supporters, along with whoever committed the hate crime itself, are responsible for this you just lied on us now what could be the possible fallout remember rosewood remember with ben reams in it uh ben reams or whatever his name is the cat who played in pulp fiction the one's like uh there's no me and you he's like what are you gonna do what am i gonna do i'm gonna call up a couple pipe hitting hardcore cats about to get medieval on you you hear me talking to you, Mr. About to spend the last few minutes of your agonizing life, rapist, in pain. You remember him? He played in Rosewood. Well, apparently, some white girl, you know, decided that instead of owning my choices, I guess that she'd had a little, little thing for the brothers might have played in this world. Um, she decided to uh, come up with this story that she was raped by a black dude. And it caused the whole society to go into a race war where they decided to go out and kill a whole bunch of black people. Now, they estimate up to maybe 150 people were killed over this. Remember the movie when she was like, he was so big and so black and all of them, like, what? And got mad. And instead of wanting to find out the evidence, wanting to get to the bottom of it, targeting their anger towards the person that, quote, unquote, she accused of doing this they decided let's create an angry mob go out and attack anybody that resembles a black person person of color this and this and that now this guy if he gets away with this because he got caught but if he got away with it and you have all these people getting upset and thinking now this further justifies my anger 
when I see people walking around with MAGA hats on it or Trump 2020 shirts, I feel justified now of just attacking that. That's my trigger. So just like in Rosewood, black, that's my trigger. Now it's the red hat, MAGA, that's my trigger. So when you get somebody, excuse me, when you get somebody who doesn't think like that, he only is thinking, okay, this right here is going to get me out of the situation I'm in. All right. So I'm just going to throw out this statement and then repercussions just take place out of your control. Whoa. Well, I didn't mean for Atlanta or Georgia to get into a race riot. Or I didn't mean for uh, all of these people to be attacked just because they're wearing MAGA hats. I just wanted to get some insurance money. Those type of behaviors need to be punished severely because you can literally tear apart our whole society and cause everyone to go to war with each other and be suspicious of each other. And it further continues to push divide into our country. Now, why is it so convenient and so popular to do? Notice it is only being done by people on the left because the left is the ones that jump at every accusation of injustice, racism, you know, sexism, all of that stuff. There's a whole group of people out there that says, please inform us of any potential victimization and we'll support you. We'll back you. You're training people in our society to be enablers. You're training them to be sorry. You're training them to take advantage of the situation. You're saying that, you know what? We want it. Your voice needs to be heard in every application. Facts don't matter. So when you start conditioning people that, hey, I'm willing to, to, to go to war for you based on just your word. And I'm going to accuse all of these other people uh, that you're the reason why this person is a victim because of your hatred, your racism, and sexism, and misogyny, and all of that stuff, that's what you train society to do. Well, if you're going to do that for me, well, why not? Yeah, I was a victim. Somebody looked at me the wrong way, and I was like, that's racism. Yeah. Now you got 50 people showing up at Walmart ready to protest and shut the whole company down without checking the facts. That is why fake hate crimes are dangerous and needs to be punished severely. Now, you've been listening to Kevin and Kevin's Corner. Slip on that one overnight and like, and another thing. Anyway, check me out every Wednesday night, 7:30 live in Kevin's Corner. Check me out on YouTube and on my radio blog talk show. Links are in the bottom. Hit the like, share, subscribe, and the notification button. Make sure you're still subscribed. And then uh, let's see what else. Check out Extreme Tees, my sponsor. You'll love their products. Click on something, put my name in the promo code. You'll get a 20% discount, Kevin. And then um Finally, if you want to donate to Kevin and Kevin's Corner, feel free. There's links in the bottom to do that as well. And find me on Facebook and the Twitter. God bless.